<laughs> gonna be combat ready out here, man. <laughs> November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, summertime here. Oh, give it's me a break. Chris brought to you of everything. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. <laughs> you gonna be combat ready out here, man. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? We're doing 2703 or something. It's a mountain between Iron Mountain, which is completely packed with people to this morning. Sun's barely even up, not even up over here. And Woodson, which is right behind me. Which will also be packed with people. Oh yeah, that'll be maxed out as well. I don't want to be over there. So it's a short hike, never done this one. So Drew uh, N7DA was just explaining where we're going here. Yeah, so uh, what's kind of fun about this one is we're going to go up on the trail right between this granite peak we're going up on and the one on the other side is iron ore. So literally on the trail, on your left hand side's uh, granite, the right hand side's iron ore, so it's kind of amusing. Huh. What's that gonna do to our RF? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll see if we can get a signal out this morning. Let's get cracking. You might be able to see over here. Sun just popping up. We're gonna be in the sun here in just a few minutes. I'm wearing the wrong hat. I mean, this, is, well, this is actually probably more than the Zen of Soda. Climb Mountain Work Radio. Really interesting country up here. Huge granite rocks all over the damn place. It's a big chunk of rock. Beautiful clear skies. Alright, we are in the activation zone. This is probably one of the wildest ones. I've been on in a while. Um, the high point, one of the high points is this rock over here, this gigantic this boulder. So, um, Drew says this is not the summit. I don't know. I'm gonna look at the chart here. Um, I'm getting ready to set up this little uh, NFED uh, random wire. It's a random wire antenna. It's, uh, well, it's, it's kind of NFED. It does have a counterpoise on it. And um, it's multi-band, but you need a tuner. Um, and this is just a, a work of art from uh, K6ARK. But if you're if you're brand new to ham radio and and you're like um, the easiest antenna in the world to build is a dipole, which gives you one band. You could do a link dipole with multiple bands. A lot of friends of mine carry those. They're super easy to build. But if you don't want to build one, I get it. You're brand new, this whole thing seems kind of scary, you just want to get on the air. There's a lot of great uh, options on the open market. Um, Pactena makes a really cool um, link dipole, which is basically wire that has a break in it, and when you plug it in, you get more wire. Um, so it's 20 meter or 40 meter, 40 meter being longer. Um, and then there's a really great NFAT option from uh, what used to be uh, sold by LNR, it's called an LNR Lima November Romeo NFED, and it's currently sold by uh, Vibroplex. So they make what's called a trail friendly, uh, it's, a, it's a, I believe it's a half wave NFED for 20. And you can run 20, I, the one I have is 10, 20, and 40 meter. Um, so that's a great market option as well. Um, so let me pull that out and you know, the nice thing, the nice thing about these is they're super easy to set up. You put them on a pole and you just have a wire that comes down. Now on this um, NFED, your coax, uh, and this really thin coax, I don't know if you can see it here, is your counterpoise. So the RF runs up the shield and you get a bit of a counterpoise off of that, as well as your body. If you get a little bit too much into your body, then you get an RF shock. But um, you can use this, uh, they sell also this RG174, very thin coax. As you can see, this is a pretty lightweight setup. Um, and so you can go out and buy one of these if you just want to get on the air, get going. And then once you're kind of comfortable with it, um, certainly go out there and start building some antennas. So I might put this one up today. Um, I want to put up the other one 
and see if I can get on 17 meters because this one does not do that, although I might be able to tune it for it. It'd probably be very inefficient. Um, so anyway, let's uh, set this stuff up and uh, get cracking. Beautiful dang day up here. Uh, slight breeze and uh, just really pretty. So we had a little bit of, had a couple of VHF uh, stations in there uh, contact me. So one summit to summit already to via Husk Mountain. Okay, I don't know if it's pure luck or so I've done this enough times, but I'm exactly the right distance from the pole uh, to my gear. Um, the one thing about this particular antenna, because it does go directly into the antenna from into your radio right here, um, you have a little bit fewer options of kind of how you set up. You gotta you basically set up where the end, wherever this thing ends up. So. Whereas the other one, it does give you some more options. Uh, when you have that coax, you can kind of throw it up in a, you know, over a tree and sit under a tree or something. So, um, you know, it's, uh, as K6ARK's channel tell you, there's, there's uh, size, there's, you know, all kinds of little trade-offs, weight, length, size, you know, uh, just all kinds of little things that add up. Um, and you get, Maybe a bigger antenna, of course, is better uh, a lot of times. And, uh, but, uh, I don't know, I've been able to hit France and Spain and stuff with this one. So, it seems to work okay. <laughs> and uh, so we'll run with this one a little bit on 17, see what we can do. See, it, it plugs right into the side of my KX2. And um, also, you've got the uh, counterpoise coming off here, going into the reel. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a winder down there. And so we'll string that out behind me. Just kind of throw it on top of some bushes. So, all right, enough yak, and let's see if I can get this thing rolling. All right, we are spotted. So, let's see if I can get, some, get to work here.
1962. Let's do some chasing. Yeah! Hee-hoo! Summer to summer, baby! So what I'm gonna do here is switch antennas. I don't normally do this, but just to give you a sense for the difference between these two antennas, um, the other one's gonna be at Halfway Venfed Fed um, from L and R. It's their, um, I think it's a, let's see, 10, 20, 40 antenna, 40 meter antenna. So we're gonna switch over to that and that's gonna be a little bit longer. Uh, Maybe a lot a bit longer, so we're probably set up down over here. It's going to be a lot a bit longer, but um, we're going to set up down over here and uh, see how this thing works. I'm at the summit with John, who's up on Sheephead uh, Mountain, so way to go, John. That's awesome. That's really uh, it's kind of a tough trail, that one last part there, but a pretty area. So, um, like I said, I'm going to hook up this uh, L&R antenna. The one difference is uh, with the um, NFED, well, not it's not NFED, it's a 9 to 1 unit on a random wire. Um, you do need a tuner to run it. KX2 will tune up a, you know, a fence. Uh, this is a nice spot where I'm at so far. Uh, Move around and explore a little bit more. Okay, Roger Rogers is setting up here. So, um, with this L&R antenna, you don't need a tuner on 10, 20, and 40, yeah, and in theory. TLC, my, my buddy's going to be on uh, Mount Kulik here in about 30 minutes, I think. Okay, roger, roger. Thanks, John. I'll, um, I'll uh, leave the volume up a little bit. Hopefully, I can catch him. That'll be awesome. Yeah, he's got a Yagi, so I'll, I'll tell him to uh, head your direction and try uh, 14652. Okay, yeah, awesome. Um, well, maybe he can even get to November 7 uh, Delta Alpha with that little Kmart uh, um, CB that he's carrying around. Oh, my. <laughs> Baofeng shaming ain't cool, man. <laughs> hey, I could resist. All right, cool. Well, I'll let you get to it, John. Uh, and uh, I'm going to set up a, a 10 20 40 here. Roger, Roger. <laughs> All right. So, like I was saying, you don't need a tuner for this. Um, it's great for MTR radios. Um, you can also use an external tuner um, for some of these random wires. It doesn't have to be built into your radio. This is ME9 um, SSN. Uh, so, the air. One last call for there's a, the yeah, there's a few guys up on the mountains here. We got uh, uh, Sheephead Mountain, Viejas Mountain, we got us. And I expect some other guys will probably hear on the radio today. So, how do we set this thing up? It's pretty, it's pretty much the same way. So... Let's do this. This is pretty easy. And they give you this little thing, which is pretty good. So let's get the line out. Unfortunately, I have to grab the smaller piece here. There we go. Grab that. And all you gotta do, it's really hard. Oops, get tangles and everything. Just down, down in there, and then hoist it up. As I mentioned, um, on this antenna, you have some more um, kind of, it's, I don't know, flexibility around where you're gonna be sitting, setting up your station, uh, your radio and where you're gonna be sitting. Um, because you have some coax hanging off of it, um, probably not the best thing to do, but what I've done up on Baldy, if you go back and look at my Malbaldi uh, video in Arizona, one of the things I try to always do is get that matching unit off the ground. So let's let's take a look at that. Here's the matching unit, a little uh, uh, matching unit and the transformer in there. And if you get that off the ground, your SWR is a lot lower. So one of the things you can do on a peak, on a summit, if you don't have a place like a bush or something to kind of tie this off to, or put in a tree or something else, is you can use your uh, hiking poles, attach it to that, and then throw some uh, some quick tie downs on the hiking poles. And if you look at my, uh, I think I got some pictures of it for the Mount Baldy hike, and you can do that. 
again, the whole point is to get the matching unit off the ground. You get much lower SWR when you do that. Um, it just it just operates a lot better. So um, it goes down. We're hooked into the radio now, and uh, let's um, see if we can chase some stations. So um, Drew's doing a little hiking, and uh, I'm gonna do work a little bit of radio here. So let's let's try it out. How would you like a drink, Chris? That, that was nice somebody to leave that up here for it so you could haul it down for him. Well, it's so heavy, you know, carrying it up. It's much heavier carrying it down. Yeah, well, you can empty all this shit down out. Um, so when we do these soda activations, we'll try to pick up trash and other stuff. I so never... we'll not only try to leave no, leave no trace, but sometimes pack out other people's shit. Anyway, so how many contacts did you get today? Exactly four. Oh, you got one more XUL. I think that makes five. That five. I think All that makes two five. Two meter VHF. <laughs> Hilarious. I, I have done activations where I only take the HT okay. before, so that's fine. <laughs> well, so what happened? Oh, <laughs> old battery's been in storage forever. That I was kind of questioning before I put it in the storage. Well, today I kind of confirmed that it's probably uh, time to replace it. So uh, okay, no, no big deal. Get up here, no juice. That can be a problem if you run an HF. Um, maybe next time I'll pack a little generator for you and you can oh, run with I that. Oh, <laughs> Honda? All right. Yeah, or solar. You should run wait, solar. Wait, wait. If you bring a Honda genset up here, you need to bring a spare Honda genset too. Yeah, of course. In case of course. breaks. Yeah. So, uh, he's act fully activated. I uh, had a bunch of contacts on 17, then 20. Um, work. The farthest stations are France and New Zealand. So, let's stand out here. France, New Zealand, and yeah, I got a bunch of contacts. Uh, I'll put it right here. Uh, number, I got a whole bunch of summit to summits, at least five up here. Um, what did we get, like four contacts, four? At least four were two meter, I think, because we have uh, Michael, MXA, over on Sheephead. Yeah, two we meter have, S2S was busy. It was really busy. We had. Uh, N3XUL is up on Gordon Point right now, working stations up there. We got another station on Helix and another one over on Viejas. So that's four right there. I probably have six or eight. Probably it was all San Diego County S2S yeah. VHF, which is pretty cool. Yeah. We didn't even have to go north. Yeah. I got chased uh, on HF a few times, and then I did some chasing. Um, all CW. I tried um, sideband. Um, side, um, 20 meter or 40 meter I'm trying to reach out to the uh, content creators but uh, th those lamers didn't seem to be around the radio today anyway we're gonna we're gonna head down I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Drew go first that way if I fall I just go right on top of him yeah, that's true good plan <laughs> also good in bear territory and send your snack size friend to video yeah especially so one you can outrun if you can outrun your snack size friend that's what you want. We uh, are just about to this little saddle here. Um, the uh, thread that we're taking is a not just a heavily used trail, not a maintained trail, but it's used enough to be able to find your way up. And uh, N3XUL also posted his uh, GPX track up and back. Uh, on the soda watch, so you can pick it up there. But uh, yeah, beautiful day. It's getting a little toasty now. Oh, see, <laughs> jeans next time, long pants next time. Okay. All right, we packed it out. Back at the car. Good hike. Yes. Yeah, nice hike. Beautiful day for it. All right, well, till next time. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about how to do summits on the air, um, go check out hamninja.com slash soda360. It's a series of videos that shows you how to do summits on the air. 
uh, and there's a bunch of links and other things, uh, loadout information on hamninja.com. So check it out. And uh, if you want to, sure you can comment and you know like and well you can you can like and subscribe. But really, I really love to hear is what are your comments? What do you think? Uh, like and subscribe only makes my ego bigger, which we don't really need. So that's totally up to you. Anyway, let's roll the credits. Thanks, guys.